Hello and welcome to my channel, Tessa Kohler Art. If you've been with me for a while, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys my process for creating beautiful watercolor paintings using a minimal color palette and the set of 12 paints from La Petite, La Petite Aquarelle. It's just a set of 12, and I'm not even using the full set. I'm using a very small amount of paints to achieve specific lighting effects, specific flesh tones, specific textures and fabric prints that I'll need to mix. And I'm going to show you my entire process and how I achieve such effects. I used a very minimal color palette for the flesh tone using only four or five colors. I mixed this red and yellow to create an orange, a light orange, adding more yellow than red. And I mixed that until I was satisfied with that orangey hue. Then I incorporated this burnt sienna here to create more of a neutralized undertone and went in with the titanium white and mixed that in and kept lightening it up until I was satisfied with the hue. Before you start a big time consuming project, I would experiment first like I'm doing here. Create a variety of value scales with the flesh tone that you mixed and experiment with how much paint and water. So the paint and water ratio and see the different effects that those create. I then incorporated this rose color, which is like my fifth color here, to add some, you know, pink rosy undertones to her cheeks because cheeks naturally have that. Then I went in to this experimentation here and weaved in the rose color into those flesh tones that I mixed. For the darker values and for shadowing, I incorporated this burnt sienna. It's a bit hard to see, but it's 211 burnt sienna and the 703 Payne's Gray to add nice shadowing undertones. Now, every shadow has some gray undertones, but I wanted orangey tones mixed in with that because in the photo, which I'm not gonna be showing because I don't own the rights to, but the photo shows an interesting orangey undertone lighting effect. And that's what I was trying to capture with, with these paints. I'm just layering and blending these different hues, these different shades that I mixed with the burnt sienna and the Payne's gray and experimenting with how dark I could get them and how light I could get them. I started off with a very light flesh tone like you saw me do in my demonstration. And then I went in with a very dark hue and outlined the eyes, the eyebrows, the nose, and was very gradual in how I applied these details to the features. I didn't want to build them up too too much too quickly. I layered in this rose color like you also saw me do in the uh, demonstration earlier at the start of the video. I'm being mindful here as I layer on the darker hues, the shadows and the shades that her hair was creating. There was also a lot of shadow and shades on her face. It was just uh, because the lighting came from the other side of her face. So I had to find a way to subtly balance out the light and dark and make sure I was capturing where the light source was coming from, which was the other side of her face, like I mentioned. And I didn't want to go too dark with the shading. Like I said earlier, I wanted to incorporate an orangey, pinky glow to her skin, which I think I achieved. But it took a lot of layering, a lot of trial and error and experimentation before I really got to the tints and tones I was trying to get. This really challenged me. The interesting angle of her face, the pattern on her clothes, the instrument, the saxophone she was holding, and how she was holding it. It took a long time just to get the initial sketch 
accurate and it took a lot of trial and error a lot of doing and redoing I almost got a bit frustrated trying to get it right but once I got it right it just looked so cool I thought the photo itself that I took this from had such beautiful color tones I was initially going to do a black and white drawing of this but the colors were just so beautiful and I was like you know no I want this to be in color Her outfit was head to toe plaid print, well from what I saw in the photo, and there was black, a dark green, and light green. I focused and paid attention to the direction in which the print was going, like on her collar. I started this off in sections, and that's how you want to approach something complex like this. Start it off in sections. and build the layers and be thoughtful about the value scale you want to create and how dark you want it to be. People frequently ask me, how do you so effortlessly render complex prints and patterns in drawings and paintings? One tip I want to make sure to mention in this tutorial is study your reference photo before you start your project. Study the print or pattern. If you're drawing or painting something that has a complex print or pattern, make sure you become really familiar with it. It'll make it less daunting, and especially when you approach it in sections like I'm doing in this painting. Her hands and face are gonna be different tones and textures, but you wanna stick with the same color palette, the same way you lit her face, you kind of want to do that the same with the hand, but not exactly the same because there's going to be areas in the hand here that are a lot darker, like where her cuff is meeting her wrist, uh, where her fingers are pressing into the saxophone, and between her fingers and the saxophone. It helps to approach a big project like this in segments, in sections focusing on one section like her face or her collar, her outfit, and her hands, and the top part of her legs, which is all that's showing in the photo. So I wanted to do this to make it easy to follow and easy for you guys to follow if you would like to do something like this. The nice thing about watercolor is when you're doing details like the hands, which are very challenging because there's a lot of angles and a lot of shading and a lot of highlighting, you can be a little more expressionistic and not so detailed in how you apply the paint. Bear in mind that every area of your subject is very important and shouldn't be minimized or overlooked or undercut or not done enough. When I work on a painting like this, I make sure every square inch of my subject is as spot on as it can be, is intriguing, and that the colors are correct, that the print is correct and going in the right direction on the paper. When you take the time to get these elements accurate, it really will bring your art piece to life. The saxophone was a lot of fun, but it was hard. And one tip I want to mention is when you are doing a painting or a drawing that has two subjects in it, technically the person and the instrument, they are both different subjects, but you want to go about the process and how you apply your medium to make sure that they don't compete with each other. I really wanted to make the saxophone like this big, crazy, sparkly thing, but I didn't want to overpower or feel like a, a, a dominant factor in the image. Because really, the person that I drew and the instrument are both equally beautiful and I wanted to render them in the same way. As I stated previously, you don't have to include all of this detail. In a watercolor, you can be very, not abstract, but 
you don't have to be so specific in the detail. As you can see, I'm just kind of roughly getting these shapes and these angles down the best that I can and just having fun with the process, not trying to be too exact or too perfect, but focusing on actually making this look like an art piece. To define the edges of the saxophone here, I used predominantly this white titanium, but I also went in with this uh, neon yellow color and applied it over the gold metallic paint that I got at Amazon. I wanted this to actually look like a glassy, light reflective object, as most instruments are. My reference photo was actually an ad for a mattress company and I wanted this to actually look cushiony. I mimicked the direction the crevices in the mattress were going to create that depth. The colors I mixed for the background are this yellow, I made a gray hue with this white and black watercolor paint and included this burnt sienna for a more neutralized undertone, I wanted to mix a color that I had not mixed throughout the painting yet. I wanted the background to be very different than the foreground of the painting itself. And I created this white glaze effect to smooth the paint out so that it looked like a backdrop or a very simple background was behind her. You don't want too complex of a background in paintings like these.